let's go ahead and get, go before the Lord and ask him to bless this word. I won't be before you long tonight, or at least I say that, you know, because I normally, I'm not long-winded. Um, so unless the Lord alters things tremendously, we'll be out of here very shortly. And you'll be equipped. you have your need met. And you go home and shout the victory. Hallelujah. What about that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody feel like shouting tonight? Anybody wear your shouting shoes tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. I know I wore mine. I can't, I, you know, <coughs> I don't buy a pair of shoes unless I can run in them, you know. I don't care if they're Nikes or if they're, you know, Meslins or whatever. You know, if I can't run in them, I can't buy them. You know, because, you know, you never know when the Spirit of the Lord will come on you and you need to take off. If you got on them Buster Browns, you know, and they... And they talking and stuff, you know, you can't run very effectively like that. So, you know, you want to make sure you got on good running shoes in church. Amen. Hallelujah. And, of course, you know, you want your attire to be loose enough so you can lift your hands up. I can't buy a suit. You know, when I buy my suit, I, I qualify the suit by being able to raise my hands. Because, see, I need to praise and worship the Lord. And if the suit is so cut, you know, I don't care if it's a $2,000 suit. If I, can't do, if I can only do this, this suit is disqualified. Because that's not, that's not me lifting up the hands, holy hands, lift up holy hands, amen. You know, you're like, praise the Lord, you ain't got a $2,000 suit. Yeah, praise the Lord. You know, mm -mm. No, we want to be able to, hallelujah, yeah. praise you, Jesus. Glory to God, because you never know when that's going to have to happen. And, of course, my anticipation is that it can happen at any time. So, you know, if I got on a tight suit and I ripped the sleeves out, you know, because well, I wasn't expecting you know, to have to do that today, you know, you know it's going to say, oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> no, we're not going to do that. Amen. Praise God. But anyway, let's thank God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this word tonight. We thank you, Father, that the interest of your word gives light and gives understanding even unto the simple. Father, I thank you right now that as I have prepared in your word and as, as you have ministered to me, and show me these things through the word that I'll be able to effectively convey these words back to your people as you would have me to speak these words, Father. I ask you to speak through my mouth, think through my mind. I decrease right now that you might increase in us. And, and every person under the sound of my voice, Father, I pray that every need be met in this household. Every person, man, woman, boy, girl, whatever the need may be, whether it be financial, whether it be spiritual, whether it be mental, Father, you know every need, and you are able to meet every need. And we just put our total reliance on your ability to satisfy every heart, to fix every problem, to meet every need. And we count it done, and we give you the thanks and the honor and the praise for it even right now. In Jesus' name. And everybody in agreement with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, um, as I stated before, we're not going to be before you long, but we want to challenge you with some things. We want to put some things out there before you. We want to um, be able to, to extend some things to you according to the word of God that will sharpen you, equip you, and elevate you and promote you to the next level in God, or at least show you where you can be stimulated a little further. Amen? Challenged a little further. Go a little further in God. Amen? And so tonight we want to talk about turning your faith loose. Turning your faith loose. A lot of times, you know, we, um, we, we have our faith, we, 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 we walk in in faith, we, you know, we understand some things according to the word of God, and we understand that, you know, Jesus came and died and shed his, shed his blood on the cross for the redemption of all mankind, for the redemption of your sins and mine and the sins of the whole world. And we understand that there are certain covenant rights and, and availabilities that, that are, are ours according to the blood of Jesus, according to being uh, children of God, according to receiving Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. There are certain covenant things that are now available to us. Amen. But what we want to talk about is properly appropriating those things by faith. And we want you to be able to access, access those things by faith. Because it's, it does you no good to have an expensive 
you know, say, say you know, say you have a Bentley coupe that's, you know, it's paid for and, you know, fully gassed up, insurance, tags on it, titled in your name, keys in hand. But if you don't know how to drive it, you're at a loss. Amen? You got a hundred and two hundred thousand dollar vehicle right there at your access, but you don't know how to drive it. That's you're in a sad state. You got one of the finest vehicles on the road. Everybody want one of these. And you got one, it's paid for. You have access to it, but you don't know how to drive it. Well that's what we want to show you tonight in turning your faith loops. See, because we have this 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 fully throttled horse powered faith. But some people just driving all up on the curve and rashing the wheels up and blowing the tires out because they don't know how to, how to properly steer your faith. We want to teach you tonight a little bit on properly steering your faith. We want to keep you off the, off, the, off the curve and rashing the wheels up and having to call the tow truck, you know, coming in on Sunday morning because you, you blew your tires out in faith. You're like, Pastor... I hit, the, I hit the guardrail again. Yeah, yeah, you did, didn't you? Well, that's all right. That's what we're here for. Show you how to steer this faith thing. You got you to steer your faith mobile, amen? You got to turn your faith loose, and you want it to go in the right direction, amen? Hallelujah. So if you will, turn in your Bibles to Mark 11. Everybody knows this passage of Scripture. Well, not everybody. And if you don't know it, we want to help you to get you to know it. Mark 11, 22. Very fa a very famous passage of scripture. And we're talking about turning you, how to turn your faith loose or turning your faith loose. Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Amen? So we see right here in Mark the 11th chapter that if you're going to turn your faith loose, you're going to have to do something with your mouth. You're going to have to speak with your mouth. And you're not just going to have to speak. You can't just speak anything with your mouth. You have to speak faith-filled words with your mouth. And your mouth is, very, is a very pivotal part of your faith because that's where your faith becomes active. That's where your faith activates is in your mouth. Your faith does not activate in your mind. Your faith doesn't activate necessarily in your gestures. You can't make a gesture in faith. Amen? F.F. Bosworth says, faith begins where the will of God is known. So you need to know, first of all, that it's God's will for a particular thing in your life. You need to know it's God's will for your, for your body to be healed. You need to know that it's God's will for you to prosper, for you to have more than enough, for you not to be on barely get a long street next to Grumble Alley. Amen? You need to know that there's more in life available to you than just barely making it. You need to know that there's more in life to, you know, than to just have a, a, a bad relationship, marital relationship, or whatever. You know, see, all these things have been appropriated by faith through the blood of Jesus, but now we have access to it through Jesus Christ. But you need to know that and you need to speak, be able to speak those things out according to the word of God. Amen? Begin to appropriate the things that you are desiring by faith. Stop, stop a hoping and a praying. Oh my, oh my God. I hear this term, you know, and, and people, bless their heart. You know, they, they really think they're, they're really saying something. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that God comes through on this. You're hoping, but hope, hope is not the translation of faith. 
you got to, you got to have some hope to put your faith in. But you got to have the word of God in order to speak out, to activate what you believe in God for. Amen? A hoping and a praying. This is a religious cliche that, cliche that has no power in it to change your situation. It has no power to change your situation. For some Christians, their angels are on standby, waiting for them to speak in faith so that they can have something to do. Turn over to Daniel 10. Daniel the 10th chapter. Tenth chapter, twelfth verse. And I'm gonna turn over there too. Praise the Lord. All right. Now Daniel's been praying. He's been seeking the Lord, and the angel shows up. And this is very key. What the angel says to Daniel. After he's been praying, after he's been seeking the Lord, after he's been trying to get direction. He said, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, from the first day that thou settest thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now that's really important. The angel of the Lord shows up. It says, Daniel, your prayer is before the throne of God. And here I am as the answer for the answer to your prayer. And this is the template for what happens when we pray. But look further. It says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So this spiritual battle is going forth. Daniel's praying. There's a war to keep, da keep the messenger of the Lord from getting to Daniel or to keep Daniel from getting the answer to his prayer. And this is what's happening to many of you and I when we pray. And, you know, we're saying, you know, Lord, you know, I just thank you that, that uh, I have the money for my rent or I have the money for my mortgage or I have the money for my car payment. I just thank you for it now according to the word of God which says, I shall have whatsoever I say. First, uh, John 15 and 7 said, if I abide in you and my word, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. I, I, I pray according to your word, Father, and I thank you that I believe that I receive when I pray. And so you lift up your prayer before the Lord. But it's been two, three weeks now, and the money hadn't showed up yet. And you're like, well, Lord, I believe that I receive, and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I don't believe that, that this is not coming, but it hasn't showed up yet. You know, because we go through this as human beings. We go through this, you know, as we heard Pastor this morning, you know, talking about this, the status of things that were going on. And he said, Lord, you know, I can't do this in my own ability. You have got to move. And these things happen all the time to each one of us who are standing by faith. And believe in God. And nobody is exempt. If you are a Christian, you're going to have to fight the fight of faith. You're going to have to stand and believe God. And there are going to be some times where it's un uncertain, unsure. You, there's going to be some days and months and weeks and maybe years go by before you see the answer to what you believe in God for. But the answer is on the way. The answer is on the way. Turn to your neighbor and say, the answer... Is on the way. Amen. Your answer is on the way. And so there's a spiritual battle that takes place. Sometimes it's short. Sometimes it's a little longer. Depends on what it is and how major it is. Amen. But know that your answer is on the way. Because from the first day that you prayed in faith and believed God, angels were dispatched to handle that thing. Amen. You got to know that as a mature Christian, you got to know that God heard you and that the answer is on the way. Amen. 
You have to know that. Let's go a little further here. Second Chronicles 16 and 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. So God is waiting on somebody to stand in faith and say, I believe God. I believe you, Lord. I don't understand what's going on. I don't like what's going on. The situation is real hectic right now, Lord, but I believe you. I trust you. Hallelujah. That's the stance that you have to take in turning your faith loose. Allow your faith to dictate your attitude. Allow your faith to dictate what you talk about. Don't allow yourself to start talking the situation when it's in a negative aspect. Don't allow yourself to start saying, well, you know, they're laying off. I hope I don't get laid off. I sure, I sure need to keep my job. Because if I lose this job, I won't be able to pay my mortgage. I won't be able to pay my car payment. I won't be able to buy Christmas for the children. You know, you just get all off in this, all off in there. And the devil just start adding stuff to you. He just starts saying stuff to you. You won't be able to, you won't be able to buy no new shoes. I won't be able to buy no new shoes. You won't be able to buy a dress. I won't be able to buy a dress neither. Mm. I like shopping. And the devil just get in there and help you with it. You know, for, for long, you'll be on autopilot. The devil just stopped talking, and you just done took it over. He'll just start you off like, you won't be able to, you won't be able to, you won't be able to, I won't be able to, I won't be able to, I won't be able to. He's like, he can go on with somebody else. You know, you already destroyed with your words. But you don't want the devil to do that to you, amen? We want to speak words of faith, Amen. We want to say what God says about us. We want to be in agreement with the word of God at all times. Amen. Hebrews 1 and 14. Let's turn there. We're going through the scripture. I'm, I want to show you through the word of God how to turn your faith loose. How to let it go. Hebrews 1 and 14. When you have it, say amen. Hallelujah. And we're talking about the work of the angels concerning our faith. Hebrews 1 and 14 says, Are, they, are not they all ministering spirits sent forth to, to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Say, that's me. I'm an heir of salvation. Hallelujah. So, the angels of God are working in your behalf right now, responding to what you say by faith. You have to understand that. A lot of times we're speaking things, and we're not speaking according to the word of God. The angels just have to take their hands off of our situation until we get in faith. We want to always speak in faith. We always want to... to now, I know that there are times that things come up and you have to say what the facts are. There are times when you have to say what the facts are. There's nothing wrong with saying what the facts are as long as you disqualify the facts by what you believe. You can say, my arm is hurting, and that not be a negative faith confession. You can say, my arm is hurting. How do, you, how do you overturn that by faith? My arm is hurting, but thank God, through the blood of Jesus, I am healed. Thank you, Lord, I am healed. And begin to put the weight and praise, the weight, on, the weight of that conversation or that weight of that statement on praising God for the fact that you are healed. Instead of the fact that your arm is hurting. It's, it, it may be a fact 
that your arm is hurting. It may be a fact that you have a headache. It may be a fact that your car payment is overdue. But you don't want to amplify that. You want to overturn it by what you believe. We want to talk what we believe and not necessarily what the facts are. And you don't want to spend too much time on the facts when they're negative. You want to spend more time on what the word of God says concerning that fact. Because facts change, amen? But the word of God is truth. Jesus said, for I am truth. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody getting anything out of this? Get this statement settled in your heart. I believe God. Say that with me. I believe. I believe God. With all my heart. You want that settled down on the inside of you. Because when things come up, and they will come up, when they come up, you got to have that down on the inside as a reservoir, as a well of righteousness springing up to challenge and to deal with the doubt and the things that's going to challenge the fact that, you know, situation is going to come up. But you got to have this on the inside of you. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. And sometimes you just got to get mean with it, you know, because you got a situation that's just all on your head. You know, you, you got something going on, and man, it's just it's working on you. I believe God! Sometimes you got to get mean with it. Sometimes you got to get off to yourself. Sometimes you got to get nasty with the devil. I believe God. I believe God. I ain't letting it go. Devil, you can't have it. I believe God. I believe God. If this don't... According to the word of God, if this don't happen, this whole thing going to have to go away. And I have gotten like that with God sometimes, where the situation was just, just so overwhelming, and I couldn't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm just, it just feels like the, the burden is so heavy on me. And I just said, God, your word declares to me. And it tells me that I can have whatsoever I say. You said you would fight my fight. You said you would deliver me. You said, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. God, this got to come through for me. Because you see. If this don't come through for me, you got to take all this out. You have to start over like, like etch a sketch. Because you didn't tell the truth. And you're thinking, are you talking about God like that? Yeah. Not all the time, though. I ain't stupid. But sometimes, you know, you just get in such a place where you are just you're just overwhelmed. That's the only word that I can say for it. You are just totally overwhelmed. And you are just at, at an impasse where, God, if you don't move, I'm done. This is over. This is toast. And we heard Pastor talking about that earlier today. I was at that same place. I know exactly what that looks like. I've been there, got the t shirt. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe you, Lord. I believe you. I just hear, I just feel that so strong in my heart right now. You got to get you got to get pit bull like. I believe God. The devil saying, "Oh, you're not going to be able to do Christmas this year." You know, you got this bill, you got this bill, you got this bill, this bill, and this bill. And you only got this amount of money coming in. You're not going to do Christmas this year. I believe God. We're going to have a great Christmas this year. 
We're going we're gonna to buy more presents and bless more people than we ever have this year. The devil will get to talking all kind of crazy. No, nope, I believe God. I can have whatsoever I say. I can have whatsoever I say. That's what the Bible says. And I say, I'm going to have more than enough. I don't have to live according to what Joe Blow down the street is talking about. I don't have to live according to the NASDAQ or according to CNN. I live by what I say according to the word of God. Amen. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. You got to know. I believe God. Hallelujah. Now, as we're talking about turning our faith loose, going back again, back in again here, and we're about to wrap this thing up here. Find scriptures that give you a right to what you're believing for. You believing for healing? You need to get you some healing scriptures together. First Peter 2 and 24, Matthew 8 and 17. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. The devil, devil's going to come with all kind of things, especially as you get older. You know, I'm 43 now, and man, I never thought so many things could hurt. You know, you never think about that when you, you know, 20. You know, and you just, you know, you start getting older, and your body starts changing. You're like, what's this? You know, you're like, oh man, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, oh, oh what in the, oh, and you, you, you was 20, you just, bing, ha <laughs> ha, let's do this, you know, you know, you're like, you still do it now, but it's like, ha ha, whoo, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But you want to find scriptures that promise you the things that you believe God for. Amen. And, and some things are comical, you know, because as you read the word, you know, it talks about young men and their strength. And it talks about uh, the older men and their wisdom. Well, of course, we know why that's the case. Now, I understand that statement because the young man, you know, <laughs> they don't know they haven't been around long enough to know anything. You know, so they just do it four or five times and it doesn't matter to them because they got the energy to do that. You know, you get older, you're like, man, I need to just do this once because I got energy for this one time. And I need to do this right. <laughs> Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I got energy to do this one time, and I want to do it right. So I'll have to go back. Because if I have to do it one more time, I don't know if I'm going to get it done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But praise God. Hallelujah. Number two, when we're talking about loose, loosening your faith, <clears throat> you want to speak out your desire according to, your, according to scriptural reference. Speak out your desire according to your scriptural reference. I believe that I receive the money for my car payment according to 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. You find your scripture that guarantees you or promises you that your need will be met or that you can have faith concerning this, concerning this particular thing or things or whatever. And then you speak it out by faith. Amen. According to the word of God, I believe that I receive the monies for my car payment. Three hundred and seventy dollars. According to second, third John and two. And then third. You want to give thanks and praise to the Lord. You want to thank God like it's already done. Because it's already done. Amen. You want to thank God like it's already done. Because it's already done. Because that's where your faith connects up and activates and get things moving in your behalf. Amen. See, faith is not a past tense. Faith is a now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You got to act like it's right now. You got to receive it when you pray, not after you see the results of it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Give thanks and praise to God like it's already done because it's already done. And keep doubt, number four, keep doubt out of your spiritual garden. Because, see, Satan will try to sow doubt into your, into your spiritual garden, into your heart. Satan will try to challenge you to make you think that God's word is not true concerning you. He's not really going to talk to you about it not working for somebody else because you're not praying necessarily for somebody else. You may be, but he's not going to challenge you. He's not going to challenge you like that. He's going to come to you concerning the stuff you're praying about, concerning you. And you're going to say, well, that's not going to happen. You know, it didn't, you know, you still got sin in your life. Well, 1 John 1 9 said, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I already did that. So what now? You got, to, you got to come back at the devil with the word. That's how you keep, the, keep doubt out your spiritual garden. Because the devil's going to try to sow things into your life, into your heart, and try to keep you from activating and staying, staying on top of your faith. And you're going to have to be able to answer according to the word. Jesus didn't say according to what my brother said. Jesus didn't say when the devil came to him and said, throw yourself down, you know, and I'll do this and I'll do that. Jesus didn't say, you know, according to the NASDAQ. He said it is written. And that's what you're going to have to come back with the devil with. You got to tell him what's written. And then the devil will leave you. He won't be able to leave you fast enough when you put that word on his butt. Amen? Hallelujah. But you know what? There was a side journey that the Lord was talking to me about concerning Abraham. And I'm just going to share this. Because, you know, it's interesting. People tell this side. People talk about how Abraham... People talk about how Abraham and, uh, you know, when Sarah said to Abraham, take my handmaiden and produce a seed and that'll be the heir, you know, and people were like, you know, most people are like, well, well, Sarah was 89. Of course she couldn't have kids. You know, of course she was, you know, she was elderly. But if you read that story of Abraham, you know, I would, I would challenge that with this. There were two separate kings, two different kings, that wanted Abraham to be in the harem. Anybody, everybody know what a harem is, right? Yeah, we all adults in here. He wanted Sarah to be two different kings. Wanted 89-year-old Sarah to be in the harem. When she showed up, the men of the city was like, woo, woo. She showed sure up fine. And they got so bad that it got up to the king. The king was like, is she that fine? Yeah, king, she showed sure enough, showed sure enough. Well, all right. Well, well, uh, to, well to who's she with? Who's she with? And then they get to Abraham. Uh, Abraham, he punked out. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, she my sister. You know, he started looking around with the white eyes. She my sister. Because he's thinking about getting dead. You know? So, at any rate, that's my phone saying no. They always do that. But nevertheless, on my little journey here, Ab Sarah, Sarah was 90 years old, you know, just about, and two kings still wanted her to be in the, in the harem. Now, you don't, you don't get grandma to be in the harem. You know, and they weren't looking for a new supervisor to manage the young girls, you know. They wasn't, you know, I mean... Now, this is not normally the case, for, you know, to, for a king to want an old ancient woman for this position. 
you know, they might wanted her to make quilts and sweet potato pies or something, you know, but not to be in the harem. So Aaron, so Sarah was still bad. I mean, like like Tina Turner fine, like Christy Brinkley fine, you know. And that's then that's still in, you know. I don't even know how old Tina Turner is, but she still looks good. But you know, just you know, we're trying to think modern day who still looks good in their you know seventies or whatever. And you're thinking, okay, well she was almost ninety, and two different kings, and it didn't say that they was hard as you know that they couldn't see. And that they were senile, you know. I mean, you don't, you know, you don't fill your harem up with the, the old and decrepit. I mean, so you know, let's let's keep it real. But uh, you know, <laughs> and then that, then there's another thing here, you know. Now Abraham, Abraham pimped Sarah out twice, and you know, you're sitting there thinking. You know, Abraham, what was your deal? You know, you think, you know, what was going on in Abraham's mind? But nevertheless, then the other thing is this. Hagar must have, Hagar must have been really pretty for Abraham not to, for Abraham not to even think this was a step down. Abraham, you should take my, my, my handmaid, you know, Hagar, and, 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 and y'all conceive a child. And he didn't, wasn't like, please, I got the best thing going right now. You know, I mean, you know, but in my little male, you know, my little male mind, I think about stuff like that, you know. You know well, how pretty was Hagar? You know, but anyway. Here's a good marriage counseling point here. Let me try to get back, back over here. Abraham said that she's my sister. And she still called him Lord. And God still called Abraham the father of faith. Now, you think about it. You know, now they both had they both had some issues, but they just stayed with God. They just worked it out. Amen. But we're talking about loosening your turning your faith loose. And I pray we said something tonight that'll bless you. Something that'll encourage you. Something that may be an answer to something you was, maybe you had a question with God about. Whatever the case may be, I pray that every need in this household was met. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time with your people. We just thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. Father, I pray right now that every word that was, that was, that was said will be of an encouragement, be of an upliftment be building and encourage your people, Father. And we thank you that your will will be continued throughout the earth. And we, your people, will do what you have us to do in Jesus' name. And everybody in agreement with that prayer said, Amen.